This is Carl Dom with The Real P&L Channel. I have an easy fix that could save 42% on fees. Let's start with slippage. Now what I did is I took the at the money call that expires in about 45 days for different underlyings. I did this on the 30th of September. And here's some of the results when you look at slippage. Now slippage, for example, here's Apple in the 220 strike. Slippage is the difference between the bid and the ask. When you go in to buy that call, you're going to pay $11.20. And if you want to sell it right away, $10.90. Now, when you do that, that is called slippage. And you can see that you're going to, it's going to cost you to come in and out of that asset 2.68%. With AMD, your costs are 3.32%. With BAC, 2.78%. IBM, 2.88, Netflix, 2.57, and RIG, 7.14. So you can see there's quite a bit of slippage when you use these individual stocks as underlyings to trade options on. What's one way to kind of mitigate that? Well, let's talk about SPY. SPY is only 0.72% in slippage, and SPX is only 1.26%. That's 1% in fees versus 3% in fees. Just this concept alone can help you increase your returns by around 2%. What's the second major cost to avoid? I'll give you an example. So using my live P&L account on Real P&L, on August 16th, I had $110,700. 30 days later, September 16th, I had $114,000. So what that was, was about $3,300 in profit. But what did it take to get that profit? How many contracts did I have to trade and how much were my commissions? So scenario one, I had fees of $209, about 7% of the total of the profits. Scenario number two, this is the way most people are trading. I would have had $1,209 in fees and I would have paid 37% of my profits into commissions. So most options traders are applying this scenario number two. Scenario number one, the reason why I was paying so little on commissions is because I use SPX. With SPX, I use 123 contracts coming in and 123 contracts going out. That's 246 contracts. Paying about 85 cents per contract in commissions, I paid about $209 in commissions. Now I understand that TD Ameritrade, uh, Interactive Brokers, and Schwab all went to zero commissions, but that's not for options. Options are still gonna be costing around 65 to 85 cents per contract. Let's look at the scenario number two. What if I would have used SPY to obtain that same $3,300 profit by trading those contracts? I would have had to trade 1,230 contracts coming in and 1,230 contracts going out for a total of 2,460 contracts. If you multiply that times 85 cents, you get a cost of $1,209 just in commissions. So I could have paid $209 commissions or $1,209 in commissions, depending on which underlying I chose. The second major cost to avoid commissions continued. So SPY and all the other stocks that you typically may be trading, Apple, Netflix, IBM, AMD, one contract equals control over 100 shares. Now SPX is 10 times the amount of SPY. One contract of SPX controls 1,000 shares of SPY, or equivalent to 1,000 shares of SPY. Controlling 100 shares of SPY costs 85 cents. Notice you can control 1,000 shares of SPY for 85 cents if you use SPX, which means that your commissions are only one-tenth the cost using SPX. Now, what's the third major cost to avoid? The third reason you could be losing money trading options is due to taxes. This only applies if you're making money, of course. If you're losing money, you actually will get a tax write-off. But let's assume that you're a profitable trader after you are able to overcome slippage and commissions, of course. And I do want to make it clear that I am not an accountant or tax advisor. 
If you're a US citizen and you are trading in and out of options and you're not holding them for at least a year, then you are paying taxes based on short-term capital gains. Why is this significant? Regardless of your tax bracket, if you hold an asset for less than a year, that asset will be categorized in short-term capital gains rather than into long-term capital gains. To provide an example, I will need to pick a tax bracket. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick the following numbers. Let's go with short-term capital gains rate at 35% and long-term capital gains rate at 15%. Your short-term capital gains rate it depends on what your income tax rate is. If your income tax rate is 35%, then your short-term capital gains rate will be about 35%. You may be in a different tax bracket. Your numbers might be different than this, but you still want to categorize as much of your gains into the long-term capital bracket versus the short-term bracket, because this will save you money. So this concept pretty much applies to everyone regardless of the tax bracket that you are in. Please note that there are income limits and rates that apply to short-term capital gains along with a bunch of little pieces that influence the exact rates for each individual. I will provide an example to help you understand the concept. Of course, details for you will be different depending on your specific situation. Let's assume you made $100,000 trading options and you are in the 35% income tax bracket. So 35% will apply to your short-term capital gains and you will have $35,000 in taxes. This 35% will apply to your short-term capital gains rate. For long-term capital gains rate, we'll use 15%. So again, for the example, you have $100,000, you have $35,000 in taxes, you, and uh, you're paying 35%. But now when you come in with the tax rule section 1256, things could be different. 60% of the profits can be moved into long-term capital gains. 40% of those profits actually remain in the short-term bracket. Again, the short-term capital gains rate is the same as your income tax rate, and the long-term rate is 15%. So section 1256 example, $60,000 of your 100 goes into the long-term bracket, and 40,000 goes into the short-term. And you can see when you calculate all this out that you pay about $9,000 based on your long-term capital gains and $14,000 based on your short-term capital gains. When you run the numbers, you're paying about $23,000 on $100,000 in profit and you're paying 23% in taxes. Without applying section 1256, you're gonna pay 35% or $35,000 in taxes on your $100,000 profit. So applying the section 1256 saves 12%. That's like keeping 12% more in profits or increasing returns by 12%. How do you apply this section 1256 rule? You can apply the rule by trading index options. For example, SPX or RUT. When you trade an index option, when you trade options on indexes, you can apply the section 1256 rule. You can't use the rule when you trade SPY or Netflix or IBM or any of the stocks. So for example, SPX, that's what I like to trade. So let's recap. Use SPX as the underlying for your options trades. Save 2% or more on slippage. Save up to 30% on commissions. Save up to 12% on taxes. So for example, with a $100,000 profit, slippage, if you use for $100,000, you use SPX, you're gonna go down to about 99,000. If you're trading SPY, you'd go down to about 97,000. Now these are using the example that I used above, of course. As far as commissions, you can see how $100,000 using SPX goes down to 93,000. But if you use SPY, it goes down to 63,000. And taxes on $100,000 on SPX can go down to $77,000. But if you use SPY, because of the Section 1256 is not applied, you can go down to $65,000. So the bottom line is, using SPX, you might see $100,000 go down to about $71,000 that you get to keep in your pocket. 
But if you use SPY making $100,000, you only get to keep $41,000. So that is a big difference in terms of fees. So if you're losing money trading options, it could be due to slippage, higher commissions, or not applying the Section 1256 rule. I highly recommend trading the SPX or an index for your underlying.